when you surrender your ego and take on board something else, you become better than you were or you thought you were without realizing it because you've got, you're susceptible to learning. And when you learn, you improve, right? Summer days by the beach, some have changed, some repeat. Gone Welcome to the Musician Secrets Podcast. Today, I have the one and only amazing John Seaton with me. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. It is morning. Should we set the scene? Just in case people are listening to <laughs> this. Go do it. <laughs> it's very cold. We've personally... We have someone coming out to look at our window today, later on, because the double glazing's gone oh, somehow. No. <laughs> We've got the butcher turning up, delivering meat. It's a whole okay. thing. That's right. And okay. I think that's it. But that's that's the day as it as it stands. And obviously nice. we've got the podcast right now. Yeah. But I just yeah. want people to get an idea if they're listening. Maybe they're on a bus. Yeah. Maybe they're just walking, listening to this. Maybe. I like listening. Walking, yeah, or ironing, or, you know, doing the yeah. dishes. Usually. I'm in a box room, which is definitely not a music room. I'm not allowed to say that on air <laughs> in case anyone in my personal life has a problem a with that. Room. It's a guest room. There are instruments in there. <laughs> it does look a little bit, it's very beige. So it looks a bit like a padded cell. Yeah, but exactly. aside from that, that, I hope that's set to see. Also, just so everyone else knows, Elise has got a lot of electric guitars behind her, but they're not hers. <laughs> they're my a husband. big Marshall amp, which we've <laughs> talked about a lot. I had a little tangent, tangential, that's not a word, tangential conversation about electric guitars yep. and got very jealous. And now here we are. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I've never, I never, I never um, thought about setting the scene like this before. That's, right. Maybe I should start doing that. <laughs> yeah, but you could make it, make them up. That was a, a real one. That's what a fake one. I'd be like, I'm in a castle. <laughs> there is a strange man making croaking noises yeah, yeah. down the hall. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen him before. I don't know how he's got in. <laughs> That would be cool. Then, like, ask, ask in the comments, be like, is this the real scene or are we just making it up? Yeah. I think you need to make a scene up every time. <laughs> and only the people on YouTube know if you're lying or not. Yeah. That's, ooh, yeah. Get them streaming on YouTube. Then. Right. Yeah. Then you got a bit of there people go. go to Spotify, listen to it, and then they're like, oh, is it real? Then is you double real? your streams up. Look, I'm, I'm a businessman. See, that's why I talk with you, John. Like, this right. is you know perfect yeah and it's snowing i can look out my window and it's still snowing we haven't got snow here we are in brighton by the south coast of mm. the england and we had about um no one can see that on the podcast i'm sorry yeah. I'm using my <laughs> fingers to describe about half a centimeter of snow yeah. we got very scared and then it didn't settle and everyone's yeah. fine so all right was... yeah we're used to the snow it snowed like two weeks ago we had like a full-on three day non-stop snow and then oh gosh um the week later like almost melted everything it's been like raining and stuff and now like yesterday it started snowing again so it's just been weird just weird stuff. the weather but yeah anyway. gosh. <laughs> all right so john um so you you write your own songs you uh sing on your track as well you're a are you a producer i would have said My yes gosh no well no? i mean I'm not a confident producer. I mean, I can I can record things. Let me show you. The, I record with my iPad, which has yeah. got a cracked screen, yeah. uh, which I've had since 2013. Never let me down. I've got garage band on that, but literally that is the limit of my skill with pr production. <laughs> I I mean, I can. I can record yeah. something. Yeah. Is it going to sound very good? no it's not going to sound very good but sometimes I, I look i think the thing is and we'll i was going to go into this later but let's go yeah. into it right now yeah yeah for me it's all about or well, being a songwriter is about knowing your limitations and knowing what you're not good at and i think yeah i mean i've been writing songs for oh my gosh uh nearly Sorry. 20 years now um, <laughs> wow, okay. and, right i know um 
You wouldn't know it from my youthful yes. uh, looks and the yeah, light perfectly really shining on my yeah, face exactly. to make me look 10 years younger. <laughs> um, uh, and I think when you're young or younger and you start out, I certainly had the ego of thinking, I'm the man, I'm the best songwriter since Dylan, I'm just waiting for the world to catch up, and one day they're going to catch up. And then you get to a point, you realise, hopefully you realise, at some point that you're not quite that good, and you've got yeah. some work to do, and yeah. you've got things to work on. And then you hit a, a point where you're like, no, everything I do is rubbish, I'm trash, I can't write songs, I should give up, I should stop doing this. And the reality is kind of somewhere in between. And I, I said to I said to someone recently that when you're writing or putting music out, you, you kind of tread a line where you have to be, you have to have some degree of like ego and self-confidence to put something out into the world yeah. that you've created. Yeah. But the other side of that line is having enough humility and enough self-awareness to be like, I need to get better. I need to be improving. I need to learn as I go. Yeah. Not everything is going to be great. People yeah. aren't going to fall at your feet and you are going to have to sometimes swallow your pride and say, that wasn't good enough. I need yeah. to get better. And I think it's a really hard line to tread because part of you, I don't know, maybe you're the same, maybe you're not, but part of you is like, I never want to put anything out until it's 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. And then another part of me is like, I want to put everything out to show yeah. everyone even, all the worst parts of writing as well just to get a, a like a perspective but I don't know and then the other side of it you can't be too precious you can't overthink things because as soon yeah. as you start analyzing someone said recently who was it I think it was one of the girls in Heim who I'm a big fan of said that you can't bring analysis into creativity as Ooh. soon as you start thinking when you're writing yeah. it's gone yeah the analysis is for after that like yeah. they're not meant to be together and that's really hard because whenever you're whenever I'm writing I'm always dangerously close to thinking is this good is this good as I'm writing it and you can't you can't do that like that's not your decision to make there and then yeah. and as soon as you take that away and just I'm, I'm sure you're the same in that some of the best things I've written are things where I didn't sit down to write. I didn't think about it. I just picked up the guitar because I was, I was bored. I was looking out the window and then, oh, suddenly something's written in like 10 minutes and it's yeah. done and there's yeah. no edits and there's nothing to change. And you're like, yes, let's do that again. And you yeah. try and do it again, you can't. It will no. never happen. No. Like, <laughs> no. You have to go back to writing another two, 300 songs before that yeah. happens again. Exactly. And I think you just... I think it's that's the beauty of it though right the beauty yeah. of it is it, you can't capture it yeah. that's what makes it special every time you come up with even if it's a verse that you really like or a chorus or a full song like that's that's the magic and people everyone says it like every artist says oh, I wish I could bottle that but yeah, yeah. really you don't want to bottle it because if you knew and if you understood how it all worked you wouldn't have that sense of like excitement and joy and like wonderment always that comes from having written something so it's like no you don't you don't want to bottle it you just want to appreciate it when it happens yeah give yourself that pat on the back and put it out into the world and I think after that it's not like you can't control I, I remember you saying in a in a podcast that it's it starts or maybe it's something you post on Instagram like it starts with emotion it starts with a feeling before anything else yeah right? yeah, yeah yeah and and I think you hope you really hope that when you've got that out of yourself put it into a song or even not not even a song um, mm -hmm. something you've written or something you've drawn or a plate of food you've cooked yeah. like you hope that that connects with someone else but that's yeah that's a hope right that's a mm -hmm. wish you can't exactly. you can't control other people you shouldn't you unless shouldn't. you've got a chip in the back of your head <laughs> I'm, i see you elon musk putting <laughs> chips in people's heads um unless you, you know what i mean you can't control people's emotions but you can control what you do and yeah. what you do as someone create creative to put that down 
over recording it or wh whatever and put it out into the world that is your thing you've seized control of that emotion and done something with it mm -hmm. and i think god this is going on ranting a lot here you could have fun Girl, editing this. this is what the um, podcast is for go rant like it's <laughs> i think there's there's a danger and i see it and i'm sure you see it and i think it's probably like the vacuum of following musicians and producers and certainly not all of them mm -hmm. but i think there's a danger in that that part of your ego is very easily translated online to wanting to be seen as popular because of what you've done right and yeah i was thinking this this morning in the shower a cup of coffee on the side we've got shower issues as well the someone's coming out on friday to fix the shower <laughs> that's another thing anyway i was thinking this and i have my most poignant of thoughts in the morning with half a cup of coffee in the shower is that what's popular isn't always good and what's good isn't always popular i don't know if you remember 2005 2005 was a, a tricky year for music i do bear in mind the best example i give of this is that remember the british public had the song crazy frog in the charts do you remember this song crazy Right. If anyone's listening, well, I'm sure people are listening by the <laughs> millions right now. <laughs> millions um, of people listening right now. Yeah. Encapsulated. <laughs> Crazy Frog was a song that is uh, essentially a ringtone that was in the top of the charts for four weeks in a row. That's popular. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> that is the best example. Honestly, after you, I, I can't believe you haven't heard this. It's said. <laughs> Maybe if I waves. hear it, I'll, I'll recognize it, but you it know, said shockwave. Like... I'd like you now, like, just play some in the background of the podcast so people can get an idea. Okay. I'll, I'll, play. I'll play it. I'll play it. 30 yeah. seconds because you don't want them to get any royalties because it is trash. It is truly trash. Oh my it's a, a frog going ding, 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 ding. That is all I'm going to do because what I can't. <laughs> do you, was do you that how I felt um, with what does the fox say? You know? Okay, yeah, perfect perfect example perfect exactly the same example. thing mm -hmm. people will buy that don't trust things just because something's popular it doesn't mean it's good yes yes that is the rule yep. the, the funny thing though is the guys that i forgot who who they're basically um they were just doing it for the for fun like they're actually in they do comedy and they yeah. kind of use music to do that and i watched like the story of an interview that they, they did where it has the, they told the story and they basically yeah. had this producer like reach out to, to them and they're like you know i want to work together with you and they were like let's you know let's just send him like the stupidest stuff we can come up with right and see what he'll do with it and he'll probably like tell us like what the heck's going on but so they sent him that track and the producer actually made it happen and he was like oh this is great you know and that's how the song that's why it's just so stupid actually but right that's how it was like released the story behind it <laughs> yeah i mean it's the same thing but i always <laughs> always think that like and it goes back to what i was saying before and that you can't <laughs> you can't guarantee that your stuff is going to be either universally loved you don't have like there's no control over it really like some things are undeniable like there's no don't get me started i'm gonna go into the beatles now but <laughs> here we go like it is undeniable the quality of that music right that yeah quality of that songwriting it does not take a marketing genius to be able to market or sell the beatles to anyone because those yeah. songs they are for absolute like otherworldly geniuses who came together at the right time and within four or five years been and gone right mm -hmm. but the reality is i mean people would argue this point feel free to to dm me on instagram with arguments against this next statement um there probably hasn't been another beatles or anything as successful as as the beatles in terms of popular music and that was over 50 years ago now right so yeah. i guess the point is that is such an anomaly like that is such uh there's so many variables that had to fall into place for that to still happen right 
society so societally that's the word socially politically economically like so much else outside that had to turn just for people to still get that music and for it to happen Mm. songs are undeniably great they work it's like it's a great thing but there's so many other things that you can't as an artist and a songwriter now you, you can't control what people are, are going to listen to and consume really yeah you, you yeah. can put a lot of money into it and you know it comes down to that old adage yeah we'd all be successful musicians if we just had rich parents <laughs> um however like you can't just go on that and if you if you've purely focus on being popular then you're missing the enjoyment out of creating something like that's the fun anything else you don't know but you can the the enjoyment that you should feel in writing something and putting it out into the world and attaching that emotion to something like I feel like that's very underrated these days I think there's a lot more focus on let me just have a certain amount of numbers on my Spotify like I don't care I was was chatting to my housemate Clive about this that you can't when I hear a song I told you it was a rant I knew I was going to have a rant today Um, (laughs) when when I hear a song say say Spotify is on shuffle right yeah and something comes on I'm like this is great I don't I don't care how many monthly listeners they've got right if a song yeah. is great i'll go on and i will save it to a playlist and i will listen to it later because yeah. it's a great song maybe i'll check out the artist maybe i'll go to a gig that's not guaranteed but yeah. it is all all my listening experience as a music fan which i think sometimes artists get detached from being fans first yeah. but i'm always i'm always a music fan before anything i make myself like that if it's a great song that's it that's, yeah. you've won you've won because you've written a great song like I will only I'm not going to listen to music because people have put it in front of my face like mm-hmm. if I don't like it I don't like it like yeah. it's same as yeah. same as food if I'm paying I love love a good food analogy just to let you know oh, that's big good. foodie big Brilliant. foodie if you go to a really posh restaurant and you spend 100 quid on a taste menu and someone puts something terrible that you don't want to eat you won't eat it because you've spent spent a hundred quid for it. If it's uncooked or raw, you'll send it back, right? Yeah, exactly. So, if someone's spent a lot of money putting a really plush-looking advert on your Instagram feed, or mm-hmm. you keep seeing the same thing, it doesn't make you go, "Is this got to be good?" Because yeah. it's sponsored and I see it every day. No, that's that's not how we work. Like it's not as as humans, and I think whether it's a lockdown thing just because you don't have the opportunity to gig anymore at the minute and and certainly not consistently but I think there's a real danger in getting as an artist getting caught up in that ego thing and and focusing a little bit too much on let's just plow let's plow a load of money into it and I think that's not going to improve your craft and I think if you're a songwriter that is your number one focus or certainly for me now after I've given up my realization that I'm not the next Dylan is that I just want to get a little bit better right year on year month to month and get become a bit better songwriter so I feel a lot of people and I think there's a lot of insecurity about releasing music and we all have that we all have a lot of insecurity we want people to like us like again a natural trait for a human let alone a songwriter yeah. um but i think the focus should be on trying to make yourself better rather than make yourself appear popular they're, they're too like that they're, they're not always the same thing yeah that is the end of my rant perfect we could just stop the podcast right here right? <laughs> i got everything i need mic drop <laughs> drop the mic Woo! end walk out Dang. throw the mic on the floor <laughs> no um, um, no, no, I agree because th- that's, I've been, um, I bought the audiobook to uh, the 4D songwriter. I don't know if you've heard, he's from Australia and he's been like gigging and putting out music. He's been a songwriter forever. And then okay. he realized all these things is like, how do you actually get your music heard and how do fans connect and all that stuff. So I've been like listening to the 4D songwriter, which is, will blow your mind. Like it's mm-hmm. really, really good. Um, and he talks about, you know, 
the artists that go for the fame and the numbers and the f- amount of fans they have, they will they don't stay in the music industry for too long. The people that care about the music and connecting and you know really being there for the fan for the five people that showed up at your right. gig, they will perform. Like Lady Gaga said that she's like, it doesn't matter if there's a small crowd of five people or an entire arena of people the performance, your individual performance should be the same. Like obviously if you have an arena, you have all the lights and all the background, whatnot, but you know, your individual performance should not change because you're doing what you love. And it doesn't matter like how many people are listening. It's not about the who's more popular and who has more streams and all that stuff. Like it helps to kind of know where you're at and where you want to improve and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, to a certain degree, you do, contr- I think you still can control, you know, work gets you kind of, you know, gets your music more out there and, and stuff like that. But on the other hand, you, you can't control if people like or don't like your music because music is very objective, right? You're yeah. like, either I like a music or I don't. And I don't care if they have two followers or if they have 5 million followers on their Spotify playlist. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's irrelevant. Like, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and I think that's I, maybe <laughs> last year, because I, I guess I'm maybe different in the sense that I did work professionally as a musician for about five, six years, touring in, in covers bands and playing on ships and bars around the world so I kind of had that I like I had that thing where it's like I'm a professional musician I'm getting paid to play music but I was never really content because it wasn't creative like I was just playing other people's music and it just it just it's a really weird one because a lot of people like oh you must you must feel so lucky and like don't get me wrong love traveling the world love all that but I think there's there was just a uh i'm gonna be dramatic get ready for this get ready to okay. quote this bit at the start put this back at the start i felt like there was like a hole in what i was doing like i wasn't fulfilled by it despite how it might appear and i think that's why i just a i got burnt out and b i just wanted to come back and and start writing again i say I, i've always kind of written but it certainly wasn't the focus like i'd come back off a contract and just not want to look i put the guitar in the wardrobe but i didn't want to see it because I was just so sick wow. of playing every night. Yeah. And I think like it took me a little while to get back into writing. Mm-hmm. And I certainly, after taking a big break and then sort of releasing again in, oh my gosh, hang on, 2020, what a year to start. Yeah. Um, in, <laughs> in like May last year, started putting stuff out again. And I certainly fell into that tra- trap initially of like, right, I've got, I've got to look popular. It's make it's not worthwhile unless every loads of people like it. Yeah. And I kind of fell out of that, and that's kind of what led me into segue seamless link here. Led me into the project I'm working on this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you spoke to George Holiday a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Uh, look, I've made that massive tangent rant come there back round to what I was originally going to talk about. Wow. Can you imagine me at a house party? Can you imagine? <laughs> People would leave, leave the room. They'd only be cornered with me. Um, but yeah, I know you mentioned about George Holiday. And I know yeah. you had him on the show. And I mean, he's, a, he's a great, great guy. And, and awesome, yeah. I, cool. yeah, yeah the nicest person yeah. in production ever so for people that, that that don't know what we're talking about right now i interviewed george george holiday a few weeks back he's the guy that has this bus where he like produces all his songs in there and where he just takes musicians on the bus and tour around europe and write songs which is really cool so if you haven't listened to that go check it out yes and that's <laughs> Continue see. Right. Um, no, it's fine. No, no, good. Context is important. Something I lack often. Um, yeah, so I, I met up with George. Well, I, I worked with a producer, a great guy called Steve Baker for for all of 2020 and put out some stuff and he got a really good response and got playlisted by Spotify. Can you believe it? Um, but that aside, like things are going really well and we all set up to keep making music. And I just, I don't know, I think maybe I just, got a little too comfortable and I wanted to just try something different and again like Steve is awesome I'd endorse and recommend him to everyone but 
I think the nature of my character is always to experiment. And like I said before, mm -hmm. try and get better, try and work with different people and expand that. Yeah. Uh, it's really funny because when, when you're in a band, which you see as a collective unit, like I was in a band many years ago, like yeah. you're less, I'm kind of, I was less willing to work with other people despite being in a band of three other people than I am now as a solo artist where I'm way more about working with others and seeing how that could work. So I, yeah. I linked up with, I linked up with George just to kind of do one song really and see how it, how it would go. And it was like one of the best days ever. Like we, wow. we met up on the, so it's Saturday. So this was before, so this was like October. Yeah. So it's before in between lockdowns, this gets complicated. We didn't think this would happen, did we? This is in between lockdown one and two. Yeah. Perfectly oh, legal wow. in case anyone's listening. Yeah. Um, we're on three now. Uh, maybe by the time people listen to this, it'd be five or six. Who knows? Yeah. Let's knows? keep it light. Let's keep it light. Um, and we met up, and yes, yeah, so I saw. I went in to the studio, which is a yeah converted bus, yeah. at nine in the morning. And by the time we come out at six in the evening, we, we had nothing. I didn't have any ideas or anything written or pre prepared. Pre prepared. Pre oh my gosh! Okay. Put my teeth back in. Pre prepared. There we go. Um, before seeing him and we went in smashed out a whole song wrote the whole song from start to finish recorded everything wow. within the space of a day like the, the song didn't exist in any form before that's that day rare. that's rare that's yeah. like you need like, like a real connection for something like that to mm. happen in a day with like no prep no idea like no concept nothing yeah like, nothing at wow. all and i was like i don't know it still gives me shivers talking about it because it was just such a a powerful moment i guess where it's like ah oh, this is what can happen when you work with different people and yeah. honestly i i chat to george regularly like he is I've, I've never known someone go so out of the way for other artists in terms of talk like talking through strategies or talking through ways of connecting with audiences or mm -hmm. talking about you as an artist like most producers and by the way this is fine yeah. most producers will finish your track for you send it off to you exactly maybe share it on their social media and that's cool and mm -hmm. again appreciate that too but like the lengths he will go to to really like harness the power of the song like yeah. it, it is is unbelievable and it kind of set my mind working like i want to going back back about capturing that feeling or bottling it but I think I, I wanted to just expand that as much as possible. Like yeah. what if, and I think it's certainly true of when I've worked with Steve the first time is like a, a jaw dropping moment. Cause I was like, Oh, he's done this to my song. Like, this is amazing. Like, this was just an acoustic and vocal and the same with George. Like we had nothing. Yeah. And now we have this like epic synth synth pop. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Banger. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've got we've so I, I it's got me thinking like what else can i do like how else can i experience this as many times as possible and i'm one of these who as soon as i come up with an idea i have to see it through i don't know if it's an ocd thing or not but um i was like okay let, we've got a year this was october and i was like yeah. right next year let's work with 12 different producers over 12 months and do 12 different songs look mm -hmm. at different styles different yeah. locations because i feel like i can talk like we could do a whole podcast just on that song with george like yeah. there's so yeah, many stories yeah. like the experience working in a converted bus out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah. like and it, he was like well, I turned to him like halfway through the session. I was like, I don't understand how I've how we've written this. Like, and he was like, different. It's different location. It happens to loads of people on the bus. Like, you'll be in a different place. Yeah. You're, you're seeing different things. I like, deliberately, kind of the concept, I guess, with this song was to not write it with any guitars. Oh, sorry, guitars. Um, and it was just George, who's an amazing keyboard piano player um and producer as well of course and and just came up with something that i would never have been able to write without him yeah, yeah. so then i kind of it kind of got my mind thinking about okay what other sort of songs can i write who else can i and and that kind of set me off on this this journey of contacting different producers setting up and, and then yeah i mean it's snowballed to the point where my calendar is 
horrific uh but it is yeah. yeah it's very exciting that's really cool like that that's what i wrote down as well like for 2021 you said 12 months 12 producers 12 songs right which mm. i think is awesome i think collaborating is the best thing you can do because it just opens doors you never thought it would not just on a creative level but also on a personal level you know you're 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 working on different things and that's what i'm noticing on the podcast it's like i'm having so many different people on here and right. it's so cool just to get different insights different you know how they're seeing it and their inspirations and it's really cool and i never thought in like when i started this podcast that this is what's going to happen like i just did it for fun because i'm a music nerd and i like talking about it right but, but i had no idea that that's going to like snowball into something like that which is really really cool so yeah. i mean that's that's like a, a really good idea what do you look for in a producer then when you're like okay i want to reach out to many different um producers like what's what makes you reach out like what what are there like certain criteria where you're looking for is it just like a vibe that you're getting or is there already you know the music that they're putting out that you like or what do you look for great great question and i i really feel like there's no one answer i think there's probably three things that or three avenues to pursue i guess for me with producers like one is if i've got a song that I have an idea of where I want it to go, but don't have the ability myself. So yeah. I've just finished uh, in the studio, a guy called Jake Skinner, who like basically his studio is a converted barn. It's got every instrument under the sun in there. It's got drum, like records bands mainly. And yeah. although it was only me, I knew that that would be the perfect scenario or setting to record a song where i'm playing every single instrument so i'm playing drums i'm playing bass i'm playing guitar you should hear my drum playing it's particularly amateurish but we got there um playing synths and he was there recording and mixing it all so yeah. there's there's that function of where you know the concept and you know the idea you just got to find a producer to match it there's the other side which is i have a song but i have no idea how I want it to sound, uh -huh. but I've either been recommended someone by word of mouth, uh -huh. or I've listened to someone's, uh, the other artists they produced, I thought, oh, maybe they can do something with this song, and yeah. it's worked, or it, it, like, there's a, there's one coming out in March, where she's a composer in Arizona, and she works with strings yeah. mainly, yeah. and she, yeah she just took the song contacted the string quartet and they put strings over it and took it in a completely different direction from oh, wow. quite yeah from quite what i really ever envisioned it as like it's just a sort of finger picked guitar number like yeah. and it sounds completely different from what i expected so there's there's beauty in that and i guess the the other side of it is having well i guess where george falls in is where you it's a, more of a co-write so you haven't got anything on your plate and you just like either who again a lot of this is word of mouth searching perilously on instagram in between <laughs> the nonsense and pictures of chicken wings um and finding someone who's whose style you like but you've not got a song for and that's where you get into this idea of like co-writing and and coming up with some something from nothing so i guess those are the sort of three angles the other thing as well like i i kind of mentioned it before but i really cannot underestimate and i, I encourage anyone creative or certainly songwriters to reach out to people you know and trust within music everyone will have someone and they're the best way to find out about producers or mm -hmm. Or recording engineers or masters, Katie, who does most of my stuff, shout out Katie Tavini. Um, you will find these people through recommendation and through word of mouth mm -hmm. and through the quality and and guess the high praise that people will put on these people. Like if you if you contact someone that you really trust and say, I'm looking for a drummer, a bassist, mm -hmm. a keyboard player, a producer, like everyone knows someone, and I think like having that connection 
I guess through someone else it's like the six degrees of separation isn't it but I think like don't underestimate that don't get too bogged down in trying to find someone it goes back to theme four don't have to look for someone who has 50,000 followers who has actually not worked with anyone of note in the last 20 years like don't look for people who are very good on social media because that doesn't always mean that the music they produce is very good yeah, yeah. do your research but I, I guess yeah speak to your friends if you're making music you know someone yeah. that will know someone and I think like have that conversation I guess the other the other big bit of advice well it's, it's kind of twofold really a plan your if you're ever as foolish as me to try and do this like plan out your time get everything together as much as possible use your google, google calendar like i have a full-time job i have to find gaps in my day to fit things in it can be done but you just need to be very organized yeah. and i guess the the other point i think i've forgotten give me a sec my brain will get in gear i think the other thing is just uh, oh yeah that's it remembered remembered stalled my brain and now i've remembered <laughs> coffee's worn off dangerous territory is to get on the phone get on the phone with people don't just message them on instagram don't just drop them an email like as we mentioned at the start of this podcast we all know how to use zoom now yeah. use that like get on the phone and have a like a conversation because the last thing you want to do when collaborating with someone even if it is just online or if it does become face to face if you've not got that connection with them very i was very very lucky early on with steve and george yeah. in that we had a very genuine human connection yeah. outside of music and i class them both as really good friends now right but i think if you've got that the the opportunity or the the approach and the chance that song has got of being even better is multiplied by a, I can't even put a number on it I can't even put a number on it but because you've got that personal connection and I think getting on the phone with someone you'll un, you'll get to know very early on whether this is going to work yeah. and sometimes it isn't right and sometimes you might speak to someone on the phone same as making friends or you know working with colleagues like you just don't get on with that's okay yeah. we're yeah. not here to get on right we're not here to get along with everyone Exactly. that doesn't happen like <laughs> but if you've had that like conversation with them on yeah. the phone and you've made that step then you can make that decision and there's no harm like there's a few people I've contacted there's nothing against them but I just don't see yeah. it it going where I want it to go and mm -hmm. that's that's again that's okay but it goes back to what I said at the start see I've made it go full circle that you've got to understand your weaknesses you've got to understand what might not work rather than having the i guess the ego or self-confidence thing everything's going to work it's all great because i'm great so i'm going to make it great and i think very early on this was another shower thought that i, I realized that i thought this year was going to be about me and showcasing look how great I am. I work with all these different producers and look at all these different things. Yeah. And sure, I mean, the songs have got to be good initially, or at least I think they have some legs on them. But what I, what I realized really early on is none of this is really about me. For me, it's all about showcasing some incredibly talented producers, musicians, engineers, mastering engineers, audio technicians who are who are taking what I have and bringing it to another another place that I, you know, you always want your songs to sound a certain way in your head. And when you get that recorded, that's great. But to take it to something beyond what you could even imagine, like they're the, they're the stars of this year. Yeah, really. They're the stars of this year. So, I mean, I, I just... I think everyone I spoke to, I speak to uh, another production duo called Jump and Turner. Shout out Jump and Turner. Hope you're well, guys, if you're listening, um, who I'm working with later on this year. And they were like, you're going to, regardless of what happens, you're going to have a great year. You're going to have a load of fun. And I was like, yeah, that's what it should be about, right? We yeah. can't control how popular something is, but you can control how you do it and having 
good experiences to look back on rather than I just see so many people slogging over and wait, refreshing their Spotify to see their numbers come up. Yeah. Like, yes, yes. that's not fun. Like, go out and do things. You can still do that. You can still meet up in a recording space. You can still communicate with these producers and yeah. and enjoy it. Like, I'm going to, I've already had a great year. I'm having so much fun seeing where this all goes. And it's, what, it's the 11th of February now. So <laughs> things are, like, I think if you have that outlook, you've yeah. won right you've won you've won yeah. the game it doesn't it doesn't really matter anything else is not within your control unfortunately yeah. so yeah I mean look I, I I'm extremely extremely grateful that there's so many talented people out there to work with like it it makes it it takes that experience somewhere else yeah. I, don't get me wrong I love sitting down behind the piano or the guitar and writing a song in my room but when you don't have the opportunity to gig and go on tour, I feel like this is the next best. This is like going on tour as a songwriter for me and work yeah. with all these people. That's a good, yeah, that's a good analogy. I think like the, the songwriter or yeah, the, the songwriter I'll be on the 11th of February, 2022, lockdown eight, um, will be vastly, vastly improved just from yeah. the amount of experience that, I've I've taken from some some incredible people, so yeah, yeah. it's great. <laughs> cool. No, I mean that's uh, I think that's what how my mindset had to change was mm. going from oh look at me, this is what I can do, this is how I am this great songwriter to wait a second, like how can I help others? How can I you know this is this all this podcast is doing is is showcasing independent musicians that yeah. are awesome that are bringing out great music that are like they don't have these millions of streams and that's fine it's great awesome music and they're very talented in what they're doing and that's why you know i'm just giving them a platform to just talk and talk what they're passionate about i'm not i'm just taking a back seat i'm just giving you a platform you're like just rant go go talk. <laughs> you know me i love a rant yeah go I'm for it so that, that's uh, so I love that you're doing the same thing in a different way, you know, just giving basically you're giving those producers like this platform and you're like, you know what, let's showcase it. It's it's all about you guys. I'm just kind of taking a backseat a little and see what, you know, magic comes out of this. So that's really, really cool. Yeah, I'm I'm very grateful. I think I'm more grateful. I, I, I guess I'm gonna get emotional, I'm gonna get emotional. I guess I'm more proud of myself for coming to that realization more than any song I could write. There's always a degree of pride when you write a song, but I'm more proud of having that mental shift in the last, I mean, it's over the, probably over the course of like five years, but certainly like the last year. And like when you surrender that, when you surrender your ego and take on board something else you become better than you were or you thought you were without realizing it because you've got you're susceptible to learning and when you learn you improve right yeah. oh my god end it there end it there and it, like, it, it's just <laughs> there's gonna be the snippet at the beginning of the pocket it, it's true it's true it really really is i think it's very easy especially in the music industry to to get a, that ego because people are you know telling you how awesome you are and then they like yep. your music and you know you're getting all these compliments you're like oh okay well then you know but ego really limits your growth because ego says i'm already the best I'm already yeah. at a level I don't need to learn. I don't need to improve. But as soon as you surrender, like you said, you surrender that ego, that's when growth happens because right. there's no amount. Because I, my guitar teacher that I had in Birmingham when I studied in Birmingham, he was, he was a probably, you know, you know, mid 40s, probably more around his 50s. But yeah. you know, he, he's been, but he just, breathes music he is yeah. you know he, he's only done music his entire life and he's the coolest guitar player I know and he's been like by the time he was teaching me like he's been doing it for like decades and he mm. said he's still learning new things on the guitar you know that's someone that's 
humble someone that can grow because he's putting his ego aside so it doesn't matter even if you've been songwriting for decades it doesn't matter there's always room to grow there's always room to improve and as soon as you put that ego cap it with that ego ego you're done like you're not growing you're not going to learn you're going to stay right. there and then everyone else is going to outrun you yeah because you're not you're not going anywhere <laughs> right i know and i think that's i don't know it's so easy to do though isn't it i think it's we like you said it's very i don't know when you first stick some music out and your friends or your family are like shocked i can't believe you put music out like it gives you that boost and that's great but i think yeah like you said to sustain that and to sustain your improvement you have to sort of give up the idea that you're you're ever going to get there and i think again this could be a rant and we should probably wrap it up but <laughs> i think if you always see because we're sold very much this idea especially like disney movies and things mm -hmm. like that where everyone's going to get to a point and you're going to sail off into the sunset and you're done and it's the end thank yeah. you happy ending but l life is not where like that there is not some end line and some finish point where ding you're there that's it you're done mm -hmm. like life is constantly changing everyone's be it creatively or personally there is always something around the corner that is going to catch you off guard on a wednesday afternoon mm -hmm. and change your life forever we don't we don't have control of that yeah. you can only really the only tangible thing that you can do is like you said just try and get better just try and improve and learn from those experiences because there shouldn't be an end there shouldn't be a, a cap on when you're gonna get there and stop because going back to what i said at the start if we had that bottled up and we knew the answer and we could just draw on it every time we get bored we wouldn't get out of bed in the morning we wouldn't have anything to drive us so i think this has been a great therapy session yeah. for both of us but i think i think like that's the thing to aim for isn't it is to aim for improvement not to aim for one set destination because i want to be making music when i'm like 70 80 even if it's to no one and i'm just rocking in my chair yeah. playing a bit of blues like I'm fine with that. Like, I want to be learning. I want to constantly be evolving, I guess, but, you know, just, just trying to, to improve and be able to look back and say, okay, five years ago, I couldn't have done this or I couldn't have written this song five years ago. Um, and I think that's the best way to be. And then you'll get enjoyment from it anyway. Mm -hmm. The popularity is like, is not in, within your control. So, so focus on improvement, not popularity mm -hmm. End. Wow. end sentence that Perfect. was it that was it thank you so much so many quotes there's so much quotes to chop up there i've got my quotes book i haven't i, no. I, I have a you know i i <laughs> it's a, this this is what um this is what i love about interviews like i always get so nervous beforehand because i never know where it's gonna go i have all my right. questions i have all you know everything ready and i come prepare i did my research and all that and then i get on the <laughs> zoom call and just completely, I love when it takes a completely different, you know, turn and it turns yeah. out way better than I thought, you know, just letting go sometimes, like mm -hmm. you just said, like, you know, you think you have an idea of how the song's supposed to sound, but as soon as you, you know, collaborate with a producer and they just take it on a completely new level, like, this is what I feel like when I'm interviewing musicians. Mm -hmm. You know, I have an idea of how this podcast should go, this, you know, episode, and then you start collaborating and then just like, takes a completely different turn and i loved how this podcast turned out like thank you Same. so much for being on here and wow <laughs> i can't oh. wait for this episode to come out because there's so you. many nuggets in here yeah me too look i love i love talking about it because i think it's it's inspiring right it's inspiring for me to talk about these things and, and yeah. to hear someone else I guess understand and and see from that perspective and you know it makes me want to go that's what we both we're both writers right i just want to go off and write some songs now because yeah. of because of this conversation because yeah. i'm inspired <laughs> because it brings out the passion like if yeah. you don't if i don't if you know i can't talk about this stuff 
I mean, I could talk to my, to my fiance about this, but wow. she would tell me to shut up. Um, <laughs> exactly. heard it all before. But, but I mean, like when you speak to someone else like minded, it brings out that passion in you and makes yeah. you, I guess it reaffirms why you do it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I really appreciate it. A, I thank you for letting me on the podcast, but also, you know, just lending an ear to my incessant talking. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I could talk even more but you know I need to sometimes that the funny fact was my first episode I ever did um I got a friend on here and mm. uh it was over two hours long wow yeah <laughs> two hours and 15 minutes or something and I'm like oh I need to like at least bring it down to an hour so I make sure that the podcast doesn't go over an hour because you know I get it like an hour is already long but you know anything longer than that so that that's why i could just go on and on if, you know so yeah thank you so much where can people find you where are your social media platforms to find you on your you know whatever your spotify and yeah good question <laughs> instagram is the place at john seaton music mm -hmm. follow me there constantly something going on in a story i'll be making a cup of coffee badly as the other day I poured the contents I mean you open a new thing of espresso coffee yeah. I poured the whole thing rather than in the box in the in the coffee thing the whole thing this is not the first it's time I've done it <laughs> you can see absolute nonsense like that uh also there's links to my music and and the project a bit more detail about the project on there and I'm always putting up clips of songs Spotify is just John Seaton. Uh, the photo is a very bright blue light shining in my face and me <laughs> so looking funny. uncomfortable. Uh, which, I love it. Uh, I love it. It's so what funny. You want. They're probably the best places. Um, so, yeah, Spotify or Instagram, find me there and I will DM me some insults, please. Yeah. Uh, and I'll respond with love. Because that's what I'm like. About the, about the Beatles band and uh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, DM me if you listen to this. And you're maybe you've you've got to work now. You've been for your walk and come back in. DM me a better band than the Beatles since the Beatles. Ooh, Ooh challenge! And don't don't DM me if you're a band. Don't DM me your own band link. Don't be that person. We've talked about ego a lot here. Yeah, don't do that. Another band other than your own. Anyway, I don't know. See, I'm rambling. It's easy. So John Seaton music on Instagram, John Seaton on Spotify, iTunes as well. I, I didn't yep. have any problems finding you there, but I'll link everything up so people will just click it and they're right there. So that's not a problem at all. Um, yeah. Is there uh, anything uh, you want to promote? Like, is there, there's a single coming out. Oh my gosh. The day this comes out, yes. get ready. After you've listened to this, don't DM me. Go on Spotify. My new single, which we've talked about, was recorded in a converted bus with George Holiday. It's called Not Lost. Um, I threw all my guitars in the bin, not in the bin, metaphorical bin. Uh, it's recorded on, uh, yeah, with, with George in his converted bus it's called Not Lost. Uh, it's out literally today, if you're listening to this on the 26th. If it's not the 26th, it's already out and you're in the future. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so coming out on 26th of february so when this launches it'll be out for you to listen for your streaming pleasures and uh thank you so much like john this has been so cool <laughs> likewise just, just such a fun guy to talk to and uh Thanks. you know so yeah all the all the best and hopefully i'll get to see you soon can't wait for the single to come out thank you very much thanks so much for having me and yeah you know me i'm a fan anyway i'll be tuning into your podcasts anyway so just keep doing what you're doing i love it Thank you for listening to the Musician Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Elise Koa. I hope you got to learn something new about producing or songwriting or mental health when it comes to making music. Uh, the fears that most musicians have um, when making music. So everything that's behind the scenes, behind making music, you will learn it here because I am basically talking to anyone that makes music all around the world so i have a great privilege to learn all of that and i can't wait to share it with you all so follow this podcast if you enjoyed what you heard today and go and share it with somebody that you think could enjoy this episode as well benefit and learn from it and as always there's more information at alicecoa.com slash podcast talk to you soon bye